his own girls because real girls scared him. Real girls did things he didn't understand. They played in little clusters with their heads bowed, not even whispering to each other. When they accidentally stapled their fingers to the tables in the art room, they didn't look surprised when there was no blood. In his drawings, girls wore flower print dresses and played with glittery horses and said nice things to each other about him. In their skies, he drew fantastic constellations, and in the spaces between the girls, he added mountaintops and shooting stars. He forgot all about real girls as he drew, because he'd created nicer pictures on the page out of blankness. He taped the girls up on the walls of his bedroom, and at the end of the school year, there was hardly an inch of white space left. His mother refused to set foot inside, so Meyer's stepfather had to come up for a little man-to-man. -man. Meyer, you're in fifth grade, he said. You'll have plenty of time later to be obsessed with women, like in high school, when it's appropriate. <laughs> but I'm not obsessed with women, Meyer wanted to say. These aren't even real girls. His stepfather was careful not to rip the paper as Meyer's girls came down. And when the walls were finally white again, Meyer laid the drawings in a Kinko's box and pushed it under the bed. He worried his girls would stop talking now that they were put away, but they still said nice things to each other about him in little whispers at night and asked him how school was going. He told them he was happy it was the last week of the year, even though there were tests in every class. The real, the real girls had been quieter than usual, concentrating, and sometimes one of them would be focusing so hard one of her eyes would pop out and roll across her desk. <laughs> Meyer tried hard not to look. At lunch, the real girls ate their little white bread sandwiches with the crust cut off that seemed to have nothing inside. During recess, instead of clustering, they ran around the track, passing easily alongside the sixth graders and coming back without a drop of sweat on their powdery foreheads. One more week, Meyer thought, as he sat with the other boys high up on the play structure, watching them. That's just how girls are, Meyer's girls said, before he drifted off to sleep, but not us. On the last day of school, there was a party in every classroom, but the real girls were nowhere to be found. The teachers tapped their feet, waiting a few extra minutes to start the music. Relieved, the boys cheered, howled, popped balloons underfoot. Meyer drew some girls for his friends, and the boys smiled as they held the pages to their ears. A teacher from another room came around and put gold star stickers on Meyer's pictures, telling him he should consider going to some art camp over the summer, but he already knew his mother wouldn't go for it. The whole hall filled with voices. Meyer was happier than he'd ever been. Real boys and imaginary girls were at the center of everything, and the teachers gradually faded into the background. After an hour or so, Meyer caught a glimpse of Beverly just outside the door. She was a quiet one. He couldn't recall ever having heard her speak. Come quick, she stuck her head in and yelped, and that was when they all noticed she smelled like smoke. The boys and their teachers followed Beverly out to the field behind the school, where the real girls were standing in a semicircle, arms outstretched, before a bonfire so enormous it could have been a house burning down. Meyer's teacher stayed with the kids while the, other, the others ran inside to help. What the hell happened out here? His teacher asked the girls, forgetting that swear, wor swear words made them giggle. But Meyer could see that something big and dark had crashed on the field, something that wasn't supposed to be there at all, and that instead of 22 girls, there were 23. <laughs>